We know that the possibility of a regime like Iran possessing a weapon like a nuclear weapon is simply an unacceptable option. It would pose an existential threat to Israel. It could trigger a nuclear arms race uh, in the Middle East. Uh, and it would put in the hands of uh, the leading international sponsor of terrorism a, uh, a weapon that would uh, give great, great additional power to those terrorist organizations. So on January 20th, uh, we and our P5 plus one partners, together with the European Union, began to implement the joint plan of action with Iran that was reached after uh, many months of negotiations uh, last fall in Geneva. Under this agreement, Iran has begun to implement, uh, excuse me, Iran has begun to eliminate uh, the stockpile of higher levels of enriched uranium, cease additional production of such uranium, uh, dismantle some of the important infrastructure that makes enrichment possible, ceased installing advanced centrifuges, ceased substantive uh, work at the Arak uh, heavy water uh, plutonium reactor, and has provided uh, international inspectors with far greater transparency uh, and access than we've ever had before. Tomorrow, discussions will begin in Vienna towards a comprehensive agreement. In her testimony to the House Foreign Affairs Committee last week, our Assistant Secretary of State for the Near East, uh, Ann Patterson, explains that our initial steps in this process will be, quote, to obtain verifiable assurances that Iran's nuclear program is peaceful and that Iran will not acquire a nuclear weapon. That is the goal, and we are going to keep our eye firmly focused on that goal. Over the next six months, the United States and our P5 plus one partners uh, will implement modest and targeted sanctions relief so long as Iran fulfills its international, it fulfills its obligations. Uh, this uh, relief will not make a significant dent in uh, the Iranian economic hardship that they've endured under the, the broad sanctions regime, but will uh, provide a, an incentive to actually reach the comprehensive agreement, which might then lead to broader sanctions relief. Uh, in the meantime, we will, we already have, continued to vigorously enforce the existing oil and banking sanctions that have been put in place by the United States and our partners in the international community, and indeed have had the most profound impact on Iran's economy, so profound that they brought them to the negotiating table uh, in a serious way when they had not done before. But let me repeat, if Iran does not keep its commitments during this period, we will halt even the modest sanctions relief that has been uh, offered. And if we're unable to reach a uh, long-term comprehensive resolution with Iran, uh, we are certainly ready to apply additional economic pressure. President Obama has made clear that he will do so. Ultimately, if economic pressure and diplomatic efforts, always our and Israel's and most other nations' preferred solution to resolve the Iranian nuclear issue, ultimately, if those are not enough, if those are not successful, as the President has said, all options are on the table, and he has ensured that a military option is available should it be necessary. Now, throughout these negotiations, our commitment to Israel's security is paramount. We firmly believe that the P5 plus one first step agreement, the joint plan of action reached in uh, Geneva, not only makes Israel more secure, but will make it bring us closer, give us time, and bring us closer to a comprehensive solution to the Iranian nuclear program, if at all possible, reached through peaceful means. Uh, I share the conviction uh, of President Obama and of Secretary Kerry that it's uh, urgent that we make uh, progress on both of these fronts, and I think you can see the urgency that we feel with the intensity of our diplomatic efforts. Israel's future, its security, U.S. and regional security all depend on it. So I want to close by extending my uh, thanks and admiration and appreciation for the organizations represented here and for the conference uh, for your support for Israel and its security, your work in strengthening uh, the pluralistic, multi-denominational uh, American Jewish community, your support for peace here in this region, and above all, your bolstering the United States-Israel relationship. The President at the White House Hanukkah party said that the matter of his release is under consideration. We have made, our organization has made the Conference of Presidents numerous requests for his release, so has the State of Israel. And our close friendship, I would we expect that it's, I think it's a reasonable request. We hope that he could be released before Passover. Could that be done?
Well, I know what a sensitive issue this is for Israelis because I hear about it everywhere I go. Uh, it's one of the questions I know I'll get any interview and any uh, public appearance. Uh, I know it's uh, of sensitive uh, nature to uh, many uh, in the American Jewish community. I think there are sensitivities in the other direction as well, uh, and I try to uh, let uh, 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 my Israeli friends uh, understand that uh, uh, it's not a monolithic view uh, in the United States. Um, but I think the facts of, of his uh, situation are well known, and I, I, I'll repeat them, but I, I don't think I'll make news in doing so. Uh, obviously, he is serving uh, the, uh, he committed a serious crime. Uh, he passed through the United States justice system, which has uh, all the uh, characteristics of any justice system, uh, maybe uh, some imperfections, but that is our system. Uh, he's serving the sentence he received from the court, uh, and uh, that's his status. Now, he has the rights of any American citizen who's incarcerated uh, to seek uh, some form of, of, of clemency or other release, uh, and there's a process uh, for consideration of such a request. I think that's what the President was referring to. Uh, but uh, I won't offer any predictions about what, uh, what might happen in the future. Your administration is commending Chairman Abbas as a viable peace partner. How can we trust him if while he is negotiating, at the same time the, uh, uh, there is indoctrination and celebration of terrorists on okay, the one hand, and he's get trying to the question because we don't have a lot of time. How is that? Uh, uh, does that inspire confidence in his uh, okay. in his negotiation? Thank you. And, and one question. right right here. Um, did you have a question? Yeah. Here's the mic. No, no, there's the mic. Mark Rosenblum from Americans for Peace. Now, to add on to the same theme, we've been told quite passionately with firmness that it's difficult to imagine Israel negotiating with two Palestinian entities. Hamas stands in the way in, the way, in Gaza, and how can one talk to a hydra, two-headed Palestinian authority and expect there's really a part? We, uh, uh, we do believe that President Abbas has uh, made a commitment to uh, peaceful uh, negotiations, to coexistence, uh, to uh, ending the conflict uh, through no negotiations. Uh, I believe uh, the Israeli government views him as their uh, natural partner as well, and indeed their negotiators, their negotiators meet. That does not mean the issue of Palestinian incitement has gone away. Uh, it may have a different character than it had in an earlier period, uh, but uh, it's still a problem. In fact, just yesterday, when some Israeli students were in Ramallah meeting with President Abbas, he acknowledged it as much and said Palestinian incitement is a problem and it has to be dealt with. It's something we raise with uh, the Palestinians whenever we see an example of it, and we believe it's going to need to be addressed in an ongoing fashion. There will be some useful dialogue between Israel and Palestinians to educate each other uh, about those sensitivities, uh, but it absolutely has to be addressed. Uh, but I, I, I think uh, in, in, in various other ways, uh, President Abbas has demonstrated that he is, uh, is a viable partner, and, and that's who uh, the negotiations should be conducted with. Now, that connects to the second question of Hamas. Uh, Hamas clearly is not a partner. Uh, Hamas, which refuses to uh, end uh, uh, its support for terrorism, refuses to recognize Israel, refuses to respect previous agreements, uh, until it does any of the, all, all of those things, it is not a viable uh, partner, and I don't see it on the horizon. Our hope is, and I, uh, is that as uh, the path of negotiations, coexistence, uh, and peaceful relations with Israel yields benefits, both economic and security, and ultimately political benefits for Palestinians in the West Bank, it's a very powerful uh, incentive for Palestinians in Gaza uh, to work with their uh, fellow Palestinians to find ways to displace Hamas. Uh, and ultimately bring the Palestinian Authority back into, uh, back into Gaza. Uh, in the end, uh, a peace agreement is not going to be able to be fully implemented uh, uh, until uh, a Palestinian Authority and government that uh, is committed to two states uh, fully controls Palestinian territory. So that's something that uh, will have to be worked on, uh, and that, uh, that's going to take some time.